Uh, just bear right. with us, all right? Leave some comments. Leave some comments on uh, Twitter. Leave some comments on uh, YouTube. Thumbs up the YouTube. Yes, please do. All right, I am going to hit the intro. Let's do this. Um, Let's go. Boom. Not the scoring. Everything was about 30, 33 or something. Man, I mean, we kind of felt that. We kind of feed off that energy. This place is amazing. Like, I, I really love I really love Duke, and I love the Amos from in here. Mark Williams, beast mode. Paolo, first half, he had the cramping stuff. Fair enough. Beast mode. Welcome back to another edition of Crazy Cast. Sweet 16 bound, man. This is, can I do the thumbs up too? Does it love Yeah, baby. Do, do you have a Mac, uh, an Apple? Maybe not. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you gotta we're update good. that software, baby. Come on, we're uh, we're headed to the Sweet 16 uh, after a dominating performance against James Madison. Uh, first and foremost, get these out of the way quick. Uh, autograph, get tickets for next weekend's games in the Sweet 16, and hopefully the Elite Eight. Uh, download the app, use code Crazy, and you could potentially get super cheap tickets. People went to UNC. Duke for literally $16. They went this weekend for the same price. It's crazy. Go to autograph down the app. Use code crazy, C-R-A-Z-I-E. Also go to home field and buy this hat and Russ's hoodie. Use code crazy, C-R-A-Z-I-E. Going backwards again. And use code crazy. Uh, again, wow, what a game, man. Um, I need to tweet this out. Right, let's hear your thoughts after they won by literally almost 40 points in the Swedes. I mean, that it was just... Unreal, unreal. I can't believe it actually happened. Um, obviously, a, a lower seed than I guess you would expect, but I, James Madison won 31 games all year. Technically, the hottest team coming into the dance. Very, very good all around team. And Duke was just insane, dude. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it starts here. We're going to bust out the, uh, the blue fingernail polish no. for my boy, Jared McCain, here. Uh, I was biting my nails for like two minutes of this game. So uh, please don't rag on me for my nails looking shabby here. Oh, no. uh, I mean, what, what can you say? A perfect first half. A perfect first half begets uh, an easy time. And then we expanded the lead in the second half. Uh, Jared said after the game, you know, he was like uh, in the in the interview, he, he said they were preparing for the physicality. Uh, they know they've been called soft all year. Um, you know, so they they knew it was coming. And they clearly matched it. I mean, like, <laughs> I was so impressed in the first four minutes. Uh, I, I don't know that I've seen all year. We've seen Duke get off to hot starts again in some games, like the Virginia game, things like this. Uh, I don't know that I'd seen Duke all year be as physical. <laughs> like, no. we were punching them. We were bullying them right away, uh, hitting them hard, um, taking advantage of the fact. I tweeted before the game that I was worried – uh, among other things about the fact that, you know, they hadn't been calling fouls much in the second round. A lot of these games were being played very physically. And so I was worried what that meant because uh, so far this season, there's been a lot of Duke uh, like looking for fouls, right? Like uh, getting frustrated when fouls are not called here. None of that today, like none of it whatsoever, even when there were bad foul calls. I mean, it helps me have a big lead. It helps you shake those things off. Yeah. Uh, but even when fouls weren't called, uh, they, they weren't like turning to the ref and doing the like, you know, like they were, exactly. they were playing on, they were playing on. Um, so what more can you ask for? I, I question JMU's decision to just refuse to defend the three point line to go under screens against Jared McCain of all people. Uh, yeah. There were some very questionable coaching decisions from a guy, uh, from a coach who won 30 plus games this year. Um, and we took advantage, you know, uh, we deserve all the credit in the world for making those shots. Jared really setting the tone. Uh, Tyrese made some very big shots in the first half as well. Uh, certainly when Jeremy went down hurt, uh, I was concerned what that would mean made no impact. Uh, McCain and Proctor played a two man game. Uh, flip did his thing in the post that he always does. Flip was fighting hard inside Mitchell fighting so hard inside Ryan young. When he was in was fighting hard. Sean Stewart fighting hard. Um, 
I, what what more can you want from a team in a game like this? JMU is a good team. They didn't play like a good team today, but they are a good team. This is the sort of game that I think a few weeks ago we we struggled way way more. Um, yeah, but we we came out ready. Credit to John. Uh, you know, in the same way that when the team comes out flat, I think it's it's on the coach in a lot of ways. In the same breath. Right, you've got to say when the team comes out ready to fight, that is preparation, that is coaching, that is coaching in a big, big way. And we ran yeah. a lot of sets for Jared early. I think the first maybe two possessions were both things run for Jared. Uh, we spoke about last game how we really wanted Jared to get more action, to uh, touch the ball more, to do more things. Um, you you couldn't ask him to do more. I mean, how many how many threes? I can't see it on the screen. I mean, he took he took eleven total. I mean, he took eight in the first half. <laughs> yeah. You know, eight. He made six, and honestly, two of them were sort of, sort of heaves at the end of the thing. And you know, the last thing that I'll say before I kick it back to you. So I brought up yesterday that you know after the first half, where it was kind of a frustrating or not yesterday, Friday. I brought up that it was a frustrating first half, but. John went to the uh, press uh, at halftime to the uh, lady doing the uh, so what'd you think of the first half uh, interview and he and he was he sounded encouraged <laughs> you know he sounded very casual uh, and then this game we're up 20 uh, going into the half and they asked and his first response was like yeah we we let him off the hook some at the uh, end of the half there you know like I was like okay this is the guy I like I like this yeah right? well there's it, he doesn't need to be like Dan Hurley, Frank Martin level fiery, Coach K level fiery, but I, I loved seeing zero complacency, zero sense of uh, we're doing well because you can do well and praise your team in the same breath for doing well, which he did uh, exactly. while going, but but like we could do better, you know. I, I love that mentality of we're doing well, we can do better. Uh, and we we played with that the entire forty minutes and absolutely loved it. I'm gonna paint these nails while you get a uh, while you get going. <laughs> I can't wait to see the the outcome of that. Um, yeah, I've never uh, painted my nails before. I I'm probably gonna blow this so hard. <laughs> I need Jared on here to like advise me. Which one do I start with? Uh, if I've watched my wife do it enough, probably I think the thumb or maybe the people pinky comment and in comment in the comments what uh, how I do this. Oh yeah. my God, I'm getting it all over my finger. Oh, good God. Um, anyways, while you're painting nails, I'm going to give a shout out to just JMU squad. My, like I said before, my step cousin plays on, uh, on JMU. Yeah, he tried to murder Jalen Blake. <laughs> Noah Friedel. Yeah, great season for them. Congratulations on an amazing season. A lot of high level players there watched a lot of their games, and it was, uh, it was an interesting day to say the least. And yeah, the Jalen Blake thing was nothing close to Noah's fault at all. That was just a, a basketball play. They both made contact. And then, uh, uh, Blake, Quit defending your family member, <laughs> right? Uh, Blake's just had a, a rough fall and hopefully he's okay. It sounds like he's going to be, but that was definitely scary. Um, yeah, I think, uh, the biggest thing the, the start, right. Uh, was huge. The way, um, oh, people are saying pinky. Okay, so we got Ashley saying pinky. Uh, oh, pinky first. Uh oh, um, but we got uh, we got um, pinky or thumb yeah. Dude, I did the opposite. I'm doing the middle ones. Oh no. Oh no, dude. This my my ring finger looks janked up, and this is like my good painting hand here. When I when I'm painting with the left hand on the right on the right, look out, man. My fingers yeah, are gonna, gonna be gonna in this shit. This we're is gonna, gonna be insane. Trouble. No, um, use color street. I don't know what that is. I'm new to this, uh, guys. Sean's I'm trying. Said, I'm trying to learn. Sean's wife said pinky. Um, All right, I'm going pinky. Yeah, I think for me right away, and I, I don't know if I tweeted it out. Maybe I did, but like hitting shots early, and I know this sounds obvious, but that was uh, that was awesome, right? Like that that helps so much when it comes to confidence throughout the game. Getting into sets that that um, have impact on the rest of the game is is crucial. So Jerry hitting shots right away, Proctor hitting shots, and then just getting in your own offense. And another thing is just a suffocating defense right away. JMU couldn't get anything going. Like their entire offense just ended up being ISO ball at the end of the day. So seeing the defense come out and play the way they did, I don't know which assistant got the scouting job for, for JMU, but they killed it. Um, absolutely impressive on the defensive. And they're a very, very good offensive team. They have three, two to three guys that can go off on any given night, uh, especially Edwards, and they just couldn't do anything. And so 
Uh, I know Grant Hill was making some comments about Flip's defense that I just were kind of outlandish in my opinion. I think Flip played a really good game, obviously got into some foul trouble, but um, you, it just it, it, it kind of seems like this team was waiting for March. And I, I was the first to say go, last week in our selection show that like I was nervous for this draw. A couple good teams. Uh, this team was going into the tournament not having won a game in 18 days, whatever it was. Obviously, it was two games, but – um, yeah, went zero and two the last two games and didn't look motivated at all. It's almost like this team was just ready and looking ahead to this. And these they played like it, man. These last two games, this was like the team we saw when they were just dominating through the the lower parts of the ACC. Um, I'm not saying this team is going to continue to go on a huge run, but it is super promising to see. And it's like I said, it's kind of just like they're like, all right, it's time for March. This is why we came back, as in we, as in Roach. Mitchell flip and Proctor like this is why we came back was to handle business in this tournament and they have absolutely done that uh I'm excited uh it, it was a fun game I think McCain hitting those shots was great but Proctor too he took a lot of shots and he has been taking a lot of shots lately and to see his shot fall the way it was um was great Roach obviously played really well all around the his the situation where it looks like his pinky was basically like half out of his socket uh, when they showed that replay was concerning, but glad it was just a dislocation and, and that he was able to come back and play. Yeah, I, d honestly, I just don't think the defense is going to get enough love from from fans and, and the media from this game. And it was just outstanding. JMU couldn't run any sets. Duke was was switching perfectly when they when they needed to. Flip played really good around the rim. Um, so yeah, that was exciting. And now we get to sit back and watch Houston uh, and AM and see who we're going to take on in Dallas next weekend. So. Uh, yeah, i super excited about that. But yeah, I guess for me, uh, the question I have for you is with if we go, let's just say we go up against a Houston team, what do you think would be something that Duke has to take from this game and, and absolutely do it next game because of how good Houston is defensively besides shoot and make every open shot that they take because you're just not going to get those looks if you play Houston? Yeah, I mean, that's the answer, though, is we have to shoot well from three. I mean, like there's no – uh there's no real way around that um that's the path when playing houston uh yeah we can we can fight again the way we did today it's gonna be just a completely a whole different level like no, nobody in america out physicals houston just period absolutely yep. nobody um but what they do is they they want you to shoot a lot of threes. Like they're going to contest them. They're going to play a lot of pressure. Like they're, they, uh, third in the country in, you know, turnover rate, they are going to foul us a lot. They do send guys to the line a lot. We need to make our free throws, but you know, if we keep moving the ball, Houston can yeah. go through lulls. If we play hard physical defense, they can go through lulls. If we can catch them on a lull and make our shots, then anything can happen. If the shots aren't falling, it's just not going to be our day because, Houston wants to play a game in which the shots aren't falling. Like that's, that's their whole MO. They want to prevent you from playing your way. They want you to play their way. Uh, I don't think we can beat Houston. If we're playing Houston, Houston's way, we need to make enough shots to get them moving enough to scramble. We move the ball, get yep. some good looks, make those looks. If we make those looks, anything can happen. Texas a and is a lot, uh, a lot easier scout, obviously. Um, Houston yep. is just is just tough in, in a lot of respects. I mean, at, Texas A&M, more than any team in the country, just lets teams shoot threes over and over and over and over again. Um, yep. You know, they, they dare teams. They say, all right, you're not getting inside, so beat us from three. <laughs> and, yep. like, I'm pretty sure Duke can do that. I feel pretty good about Duke's chances of doing that. Wade Taylor will get his, but like, I, I feel pretty good about those chances. Houston might do a little bit of that, but they're not going to let those threes go as uncontested as A&M would. Uh, Houston will contest. Definitely. Houston would rather foul. They're going to get in your space. They're going to try to turn you over. They're going to out-physical you. Yeah, I was just gonna bring this up. Be fun. Be, I mean, a little interesting tidbit would be playing Henry Coleman in the in the Sweet Sixteen. Um, but yeah, I'm, obviously, I think it, 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 it's it'd be stupid to say I'd rather play Houston than AM. Obviously, they they both present different challenges, but Houston's been one of the best defensive teams in the country and have two guards that can really the best, period yeah. defensive team in the country. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Um, yeah, I, I, at this point, like you're going to get a Texas team in, in Dallas. I obviously would prefer to see A&M over Houston, but um, I, I think that's the biggest thing today. We had we only had six ton- turnovers against the team um, that does turn the ball or that forces turnovers at, at a pretty high clip, if I remember reading the stats right. So that was awesome. Like you said, the, the ball movement that we had today with the, the amount of turnovers that we had was super promising going into next weekend. And I think like this team playing with this confidence uh, and having that going to next weekend, especially if they do play Houston, another physical team where, like you said, it was talked about all week, not all week, but it's been kind of talked about all year that, that this team's kind of soft and against physical teams, they can't really do as much as you would like basically going all the way back to last year against Tennessee in the round of 32, like just getting bullied around and they made it a point today to make sure that wasn't the case. And if, if they keep that same mantra going to the next game, take care of the ball and not be afraid of, of the challenge of a physical team. I think uh, Duke has a decent chance and I, this sounds crazy, but if Duke can get by this next game, Marquette's a good team, obviously NC state's there as well, but um, that, yeah, I, I don't want to look past that game, but it, it, yeah, it's not Kentucky that I, and Kentucky obviously got beat in the first round, but like, there's no one that is like terrifying me on the bottom half of the bracket right now. Obviously Marquette's good and, and poses some challenges, I have I had them in my elite eight, but um, just as far as like matchup wise go, I think Duke could handle a Marquette or NC State, um, not in the way that they did today, but I just I think those matchups are favored Duke in in some capacity, in my opinion at least. Yeah. Uh, by the way, doing the right hand, like painting my nails using the left hand for the brush. For those of you just joining, I'm painting my nails blue because Jared McCain was unstoppable today. And I, I felt it was a worthy homage. I've never done this before, so I am I am not doing a good job. I uh, what's your, what's really, your long term plan for these? Are, are these coming off like after the show, or are you going to rock these this week? I haven't decided yet. I, I think I'm going to have to take these off because I'm butchering them. But maybe uh, maybe my wife. Uh, I'm I'm trying to decide whether it would be like good luck to have them painted for the Houston game. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's definitely like uh, uh, us advancing. This is the furthest John has gone uh, in the tournament. This is the farthest uh, everybody other than uh, Jeremy has gone uh, in the tournament for our team. Job's not yeah. finished. Uh, I want to do whatever I can. I want to. Uh, it's like Starship Troopers. I'm I'm doing my part. Karen's painting hers blue. Hell yeah, Karen. Um, I'm 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 learning. I'm doing my best here. It's gonna look vicious. I'm going to do a reveal uh, once. I probably need a second coat. I don't know. Is that something that people do? Do they do two coats? It just looks a little thin in places. I don't know. Again, yeah. I'm learning on this live here. People can advise. Um, but yeah, my, my other thing I want to I comment on is somebody brought it up. Uh, yeah, the bench. Oh, the bench play. I, this one's, oh, no. Oh, no. This one's so bad. This one is so bad. Uh, no, keep talking while I see if I no, can fix it. Oh, no, God. you're good. Uh, the bench play tonight, man. I, I think a, an underrated part of Duke's success is uh, uh, Ashley says, yes, you need two coats. Thank you, Ashley. Oh, and so does Batania. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing Okay, that this right. is all good intel. This is good intel. Then a clear – yeah, you got to do a clear coat on top. My wife, like, puts hers Whoa, in, like, really? She puts hers in like some sort of thing that like zaps them. I don't know what it is, but like it's got this like LED light. Anyways, God, we're talking way damn, too much. Damn, all these it. rules. My goodness gracious. I didn't know yeah. what I was getting myself into. Um, I feel like if you look back at a lot of Duke's games, you can you can see some trends, obviously, when they play well. And I think bench play being not, not only not just productive, but just not um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they don't come in and ruin things like when, when Ryan Young comes in and doesn't turn the ball over a lot and is playing decent defense and, and is is active on the glass. And obviously Sean Stewart coming in and not following a lot today. He followed three times. I think two of them were a little bit touchy follows. I didn't like that. I even tweeted out if he gets an unfair whistle, it seems like just because like when he jumped, he jumped like sky high in that one guy. And uh, they call it a foul basically because he was up so high that the guy like didn't have a chance to shoot. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah, he's anyway. getting the freshman. He's getting the freshman whistle. Like he's yeah, not. They don't, they don't a... know. They don't know how to officiate that. Uh, his style of player, they haven't seen it anyways. So, but yeah, I think Sean Stewart coming in providing the spark that he did. Ryan Young coming in and not being not that he's been a turnover machine this year, but um, handling the ball well, making plays in the defensive end, just not making sure Duke still wins those minutes when power, when uh, Stewart and 
and Ryan Younger in, I think is huge for the, how, why they played so well today. Obviously, there's so many other factors, but like going forward too, that's just like a small part of of why this team is it can be successful and and should be successful going forward. Um, I think some people are going to comment that it, Duke beat a 14 seed and a 12 seed to get to the Sweet 16. That'll probably that could be some sort of narrative when it comes to uh this it's team fair. forward but it's it's fair but you you play you play against who you who you have across from you right like you you take i think coach k said it and i think it's an obvious coaching cliche but like you go into these tournaments as if they are four team tournaments little mini tournaments right and you play who you're supposed to who you get paired up against and duke um did just that it's uh they won their four team tournament now they gotta go do it again next weekend um but i i i have a lot of faith now in this staff um, and as far as a game plan goes for a team like Houston um, on like three or four days of rest and able to to watch it back, hopefully Roach's finger is, is fine and not just not going to be an issue because I know he's been dealing with, I think, an ankle issue all year long. So the healthier we can be, the better. But man, if Flip shows up the way he has these last two games and McCain and Proctor continue to do it, this team can play against anybody. They really can. And uh, it, it should get Duke fans excited. Yeah, Flip's defense has been outstanding. Um, he's not forcing anything. He's playing. I, I think it was Rafter who said, you know, he's playing with joy. I do think that that's true. Um, he just looks happier out there. He looks like he's having a good time. I mean, winning helps, you know, winning definitely helps. Um, if Lucas had the scout, then Lucas crushed it. Uh, I, although like, I also, it, it, look, I don't want to take away credit cause you have to make uh -oh, the shots. There we go. No, I, I'm just so baffled that this team that has taken away people's threes and forces you to sort of win on like these ISO dribble drives. I mean, like it's got to just be because Duke is that much more athletic uh, and big than like, you know, they played all like mid-major teams and then they played two Big Ten teams. And it's not like the Big Ten is known for being overwhelmingly athletic either. Yeah. So it must just be like they didn't know how to handle it, period. Um, because I've, I, I watched them a couple of times this year. I I've never seen them just like give up completely wide open threes time and again to people who had already made several threes so far yeah. in the game. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was really baffling, but you still have to make those threes in, in clutch situations. I mean, uh, look, there's no getting around that Duke, uh, beat two double digit seeds. It happens. Uh, I did lose that JMU plus 7.5. I I tweeted before the game, I thought this was going to be a tough game. I thought we would win, but I thought uh, it was going to be a nail biter, which is why I, I, I pre-bit my nails here. By the way, here's my first... Uh, it doesn't oh, look bad on. from a distance. Hold on. How do we... It doesn't look bad. Oh, no. If you blow me up, it's going to look so bad. Look, at, uh, from afar, it's not bad. Hold on. Let me get the chat out of the way quick so I can we can get a screenshot oh, of all of this. Look, from afar, it, it, it looks okay. If I'm way back here, right? Hold on. That's not bad. One. Keep it, keep it. What? Give us a cheese. There we go. No other. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Got it. Thank you. Wait, hold on. I can do a better. I can do a better look. I can do a better one. Give me one more. Give me one more. Oh my God, you're getting picky now. Okay, hold on. Got to get the thing up. Oh, there's Zion just in time to see what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, baby, we got it. <laughs> All right, back. We Check. got it. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me connect my um It does need another coat, Ashley. I agree. Everywhere. Thank you, Aaron. Some good yeah. some good feedback for these nails. Do y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. barely, barely. Yeah. You might need to get closer to the mic or speak up a little bit. Your headphone your headphone mic isn't the best. If you could switch it to your phone one, it might be better. I won't be able to hear you then. Oh. Okay. Oh, uh, what about now? Am I good? Am I good? I mean, barely. Just, just go. Just talk. Yeah. Just talk give, us your, give us your thoughts, Zion. Hi, right, man. Good way, man. Y'all cast up JMU too much for my liking, bro. But you know, um, that's a great win. That's one of the best, the best games we've seen all season from this team. Uh, guard play, fantastic. If you get great guard play in March, you will win games. But. Yo, I'm impressed, man. Jeremy King, I'm sorry, y'all. He's gone. He's gone. That boy is gone. So it's tough, but you know, that's what happens. Yeah. Um, any were, were you in a suite tonight or were you uh up front? I was I just came from 
the locker room, but I was in a suite um, during the game. Okay. Very cool. Any uh, any inside info from the locker room? Yeah. Nah, I didn't stay too long. My phone was dying, but uh, you know everybody's hype, good vibes, good energy. Uh, you know, so hey man, we got Houston next, I guess. Wait, is Houston playing right now? Uh, it's Houston and A and M are gonna play next. What did you see back uh, there, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, vague injury concerns? I mean, obviously, Roach went back into the game. What about Jalen Blakes? Was he was he out and about? Nah, he was nowhere to be found in the locker room. I mean, I don't even think Duke would have let that happen. Uh, Fair enough. If that's the case. But, you know, um, yeah, I think we'll probably find out. Or we may not find out about it. Duke hides injuries as well as anybody. Uh yeah. And, you know, Jeremy looked fine. Uh, Jeremy looked me dead in the oh, – y'all know the backstory with Jeremy, so I'm not going to get into that. But <laughs> I'll tell y'all later on, off the phone, off the stream. But uh, good win. Good win. Awesome, man. That's great. Uh, any Anybody anybody get a, a water bottle shower that you're aware of? Did McCain get bombarded when he came back? Uh, no, nah, I didn't see anything. I, I think they might have got showered. I don't know. I just heard yelling, so I'm assuming <laughs> someone got showered. Uh, all right, man, that's awesome. You, uh, you staying around for the next game, or is there is there, is there no more games there tonight? No, nah, UConn, UConn is playing right now. Um, I'll stay for a little bit, but hey, I gotta watch this game back. This is a game I'm gonna watch back. No, yeah, everything, you'll, every second. Enjoy the hell out of it, man. All right, man. Well, we'll let you get back to the UConn game. Appreciate you jumping in. Uh, all right see ya <clears throat> man that's that's good news though uh that jeremy was looking fine that, i mean not that a pinky you're on your non-shooting hand can keep you out but as far as like dribbling and stuff that obviously that's huge so good to hear um as far as dribbling and stuff yes <laughs> i mean i agree important, but like your pinky's your pinky right like come on <laughs> You'd be was, it, fine. was it his shooting hand or his non-shooting no hand? it was his left hand if i remember right Hmm. So not too yeah. bad. Not too bad. Um, but yeah, it's Clemson. I don't have the Clemson game on. Are they still they still doing their thing? They are up 15 with six and a half left. Oh no, I had Baylor money line, Duke money line parlay, so that sucks. Oh well. Hey, ACC. there's still plenty of time for Clemson to Clemson. But you Everything. know, it's so funny like how Brad Brownell is is constantly on a will he or will he not get fired and like coming into this season everyone was like this is the season where he proves it and then they start disappointing early and everyone's like he's done the end of the season like him and keats both yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like so funny uh how the, the acc needs better coaches <laughs> we they do you just can't get it but i mean shit if you make the sweet 16 you're not going to go anywhere. The NC State's locked into Keats for the next three years. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and they were bad this year. <laughs> like Clemson bad. is locked into Brownell for at least a while longer if they make the Sweet 16. I, it might be – hold on. I'm going to look into this. And we were so close. Up. We see While well, you're looking that up, we were so close to getting Dusty May at Louisville that they literally tweeted out a picture of – the Yum Center having a press conference all set up and everything. And then he just says psych and goes to Michigan. So if you want to talk about ACC coaches getting better, I think that would have been a step in the right direction. Uh, and now they're looking at, um, I can't remember the names. Yeah, Holloway from uh, – Holloway and Abdul Rahim or whatever. Or I forget the other one's name. Yeah, it's, it's sounding like Holloway at present from Seton Hall. I mean, Seton Hall didn't even make the tournament this year. Like they were – they, sure, they probably should have. No, they shouldn't have. Um, I, who who were who do they go in over? Because like I would have, like, but St. John's should have been in before them. Like St. John's had a better resume than Seton Hall. If, if you're uh, looking at who the committee had as like their first four out and and so on, St. John's wasn't even close to that. So if you want to go by what the committee standards insane. were, Seton Hall was ahead of St. John's. So that's why I bring. I bring yeah. that up, but I mean, wasn't Pitt ahead of of? I would put Pitt in honestly. Yeah. But regardless, like Seton Hall, yeah. not a bad season. But him to leave that so quickly seems odd. But they're gonna probably throw a ton of money at him. So yeah, this will be the second, uh, the second Sweet Sixteen for Brad Brownell, the fifth total 
uh, in Clemson history. Yeah, he's going to be there forever. <laughs> He'll just be there forever. Yeah. He'll be on the hot seat. <laughs> any any comment here, Russ? The ACC just Dude, undefeated. The fact, the fact that people ignore Virginia is crazy to me. The, pa- well, the fact that well, people that- – That's first four. We said first and second rounds. Yeah, but you know that shit is whack, though. Like, it, it's not okay. a perfect – like. It's only a perfect record if you completely ignore that the third place team in the ACC, the third best team in ACC play, shit the bed on national television uh, to a Mountain West team at that. And absolutely nobody wants to talk about it. And they're all like, well, they don't count. Yes, they came in third. And yes, every year they win, they're in second place or first place in the ACC. And then they lose right at the beginning of the uh, first weekend of the tournament. Yes, that's always true. But we're going to ignore that and focus on everything else. Absolutely. You know, you know, they, I, you know what I thought about this today? We, we, as in the ACC, don't claim Virginia anymore. They're an independent. They just hang around. And in the tournament, that, that we don't claim them. We don't claim them at all. We are 8 0 in the tournament. ACC hasn't lost yet of competent teams. So, yeah, we don't claim Virginia anymore. They don't play ACC basketball. They play Tony Bennett basketball, and that's not ACC basketball. So, I'm done with it. We don't, they are not, we don't take them anymore. They're not a part of the ACC. That's all I'm going to call it. But it does so well in ACC play. <laughs> they're They're better than ACC teams. For 30 games of the year. <laughs> Not when it counts. So we don't claim them anymore. I'm done with that. Yeah, I think that's crazy. I mean, I, <laughs> my my thing that I was talking about, obviously, online that literally nobody wants to hear about is, yeah, it, Duke and UNC in particular carry a lot of weight in terms of the ACC progressing. You know, and, and usually every year. I looked this up. So since uh, there was a tweet going around that since 1980, we have made, we've made a Sweet 16, the ACC. Has made, not we. The ACC has made a Sweet 16 every year in the tournament from 1980 on. Okay. Yeah. So I did a little digging because I was like, "Huh, that's interesting." So we have made 118. The ACC has made 118 Sweet 16s in the last uh, 45 tournaments. Okay. How many of those 118 do you think are Duke or UNC? Oh, I think I saw this stat. What? Didn't you tweet it out? You could give me a you could give me a percentage. I, I think I probably did tweet it out. Yeah. There. Anyways, go with the answer. Yeah, fifty six of them. Right. The ent- every ACC team combined in the last forty uh, five tournaments or whatever it is since nineteen eighty. Yeah. Um, they combine for sixty two Sweet Sixteens in that span, which still averages like a little more than one a year. Not bad. Right. Okay. Not awful. You know. Yep. Then UNC and Duke combined for 56 in the last 40, right? That's yeah. closer to one and a half. So like it just it it helps tremendously the conference performance when you have two blue bloods in your conference, which no other conference has. That's the first thing. The second thing is that conference strength, when everybody talks during the regular season about conference strength and like, oh, why are the quads this way? Why aren't these games looked as better? They're ACC teams, blah, blah, blah. Because they're based on how you played that season. It doesn't matter that Miami went to the Elite Eight last year. They sucked this year, right? You can't weigh past performance on present performance. And in the pre-conference play, ACC didn't do well. We didn't do well last year either, right? And I'm not talking about Duke and UNC. I'm talking about all those other teams, (laughs) right? Like what happens in the middle of the conference, the bubble teams, the low middle teams, the basement of the conference – that's where conference strength is built, right? So when you look at like, why is the big 12 scene is so good? Well, you look at like Oklahoma state and West Virginia, and even when they suck, they're so much better than Louisville and Notre Dame and Georgia tech and like whatever. And the third thing that I will say, as it pertains to the mountain West and probably the big 12, I don't, I don't know about the big 12, certainly the big East, uh, even though they didn't get as many teams in, um, you can't have teams losing to the shitty teams in your conference, right? Like the only reason the Mountain West got six teams in is because the top six teams beat up everybody. They won some road games out of conference and then they won some road games against the big teams, right? And the committee clearly valued road games. If you look at like those bottom two or three uh, teams of the Mountain West, they didn't beat a single, they they won like two games in conference yeah. or whatever, right? Whereas in the ACC, 
Louisville can be a little feisty sometimes, even though they suck. Notre Dame knocked off a couple teams. Miami uh, swept Virginia Tech, I think, um, and then certainly like beat somebody else. Um, and so then when Miami swoops Virginia Tech, well, now Virginia Tech is lower. Now when Virginia Tech beats somebody, right, it's a trickle-down effect. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it really is. Whereas in the Mountain West, San Diego State wins some big games out of conference. Nevada wins some big games out of conference. Now, when in conference, Boise State sweeps Nevada, well, now they're elevated up. Now, when somebody wins at Boise State, now they're elevated up, right? Trickle down effect. So it it all boils down to like how teams can do in terms of consistency and how the basement and like the middle of the conference, those bubble teams, how they can perform. And this year, if Wake Forest doesn't lose at home to Georgia Tech or whatever the bad team was they lost to in the last week, they're in the tournament and nobody's talking about this because then the ACC has six teams in the tournament and everyone's like, oh, the ACC got respect or whatever it was that people were like, you know, demanding. But, exactly. you know, it always boils down to that out of conference play. That's like the first and foremost thing. And if, you know, the bad teams in conference lose a shitload of games out of conference to bad teams, uh, which the ACC did this year, the bad teams in the ACC did. Then those bad teams beat the middle teams. Now the middle teams look worse. It just it it's it's a it all it all spins together. So next year, this is why we always talk about coaching. If Louisville has a good coach, right, and they bring in you know some uh, NIL, they bring in some transfers. That's going to help a lot. SMU fired their coach, which they shouldn't have done. But they have a ton of money. They're certainly looking at some very big name coaches, which would be very cool. They're going to throw around a lot of NIL money to join the ACC, which will be really cool. Uh, Stanford fired their coach. They are certainly going to upgrade in coach from what they had. It's possible that Stanford is going to be a little more uh, relevant, especially given that uh, most of the teams are going to have to fly across the country to play there. They're probably going to have a pretty good home court advantage. I think Mark Madsen is a really good coach at Cal. Cal's yes. not it's Cal's a really hard program to win at, but yeah. team but guys have done it, right? If you get the right guys in, it's possible. So yeah. you just need the good coaches, man. And the good coaches mean then you win out of conference games. And once you win those out of conference games, then you're seen as a top tier uh conference that year. But until the ACC starts doing that, it's a losing, it's a losing game in terms of trying to convince people when like one team wins two games in the tournament. The whole ACC was disrespected this year. That's it's bullshit. It's not the way statistics work. Yeah, I love I love poking the the bear that is Russ's uh, ACC putridness and, and people trying. This year to- is called death and taxes. Death, taxes, and people bitching about the ACC not being respected <laughs> online. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, man. Well, um, I think we have. Uh, Duke playing on the 29th, which I believe is what Friday has to be Friday. I yeah. would think it, I would think we're a Friday game. We will play Friday in Dallas against either Houston or AM. Uh, and then if they win that, we play Sunday. So in Dallas, uh, any closing thoughts here before we wrap up and, and bounce? I hope Jalen Blakes is okay. I love that he tried to catch a body there. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, Mark Mitchell almost, almost lost that, uh, he almost lost that uh, dunk that that he did too. It like grazed the front of the rim as he hammered it down. I was very concerned he was gonna get blocked <laughs> by the rim. He jumped from so far. Yeah, that was impressive. That was very impressive. We got our Sean Stewart alley oops, um, including one where he caught it with two hands and then threw it down yeah, with one. I mean, sick. that's sick. The dude's got bunny. TJ Power hit a three. Spencer Hubbard tried crossing up the big guy and so, multiple really times they tried yeah. to get Hubbard the ball. I was dying laughing. Um, yeah. I think that dude just fouled him just because he didn't want to get fried. <laughs> he was yeah, right absolutely. up in him and he was like, he was like, man, if this kid like throws this up and it goes into my face, this is so dumb. You know, like, he's down, like let me yeah. just get him to the free throw line. He'll make a free throw. People will cheer. Um, yeah. yeah, we just need to keep playing the same way. Uh, that we yeah. played today. It's going to be a completely different world, whether it's Houston or Texas A&M. Both teams uh, fight so hard on the glass. Both teams play so, so, so physically. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have some stuff to overcome. By the way, Baylor game is only a six-point game now. Perfect. I'm going to go. I'm going to go watch it here. Um, yeah, I, I think we'll do another game, another show, whether it's all three of us or not. I'll, I'll be available and should be able to play or not play. Should be able to uh, do a show. I think it'd be. Um, Before next Friday's game, Ryan? Yeah, why not a pre a pre a preview show? Oh, 
Yeah, we might we might be able to do that. Um, You're a busy. I mean, we, we'll we'll talk yeah. about it off there. Either way, yeah. uh, hopefully we'll try to. We'll do our best to try to. Um, yeah, I got to get my uh, my second coat on these nails. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, for me, no great great game. Uh, super promising. I I think like I said, I think I said it in our selection Sunday show. I, I this team just wasn't playing well coming into the tournament. Didn't give a lot of hope, and I'll be the first to admit, like I was going to be and i'm still kind of surprised pleasantly surprised by the way this team came out and played this weekend absolutely love it i'm happy to see it because they played like this two uh about three three to four weeks ago now and and for the subsequent uh or prior to that they played this way against some of the middle of the road acc teams so great to see it happen again great to see flip playing the way he is and, and how he is mccain lighting it up just uh looking forward to happening again next weekend again shout out uh noah friedel and jam you on a fantastic season boo uh, boo <laughs> hey um you know i want to I, I wanted to point out two more things before we go one yeah. is you know the 2016 team was like what we had talked about beforehand mm -hmm. that this was a comparison and you know that team played a 13 seed and a 12 seed um but we beat both of those teams by single digits all right so Different. you have to feel a little better that you know, I, now granted, I think Houston is better than that Dylan Brooks Oregon team, but <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we'll see if we end up playing them. Uh, I definitely feel a little more confident. The last thing I want to bring up, which we should definitely at least address, because I've we've already seen it going around on Twitter, is uh, you know, on Monday, I think a lot of dudes are going to enter the transfer portal from a yeah. bunch of teams. Oh yes. Yep. Uh, really important to bring this up because like I saw, you know, a couple people were tweeting about the Carlisle kid from Stanford said that Duke was on uh, like the Duke had, uh, what was the wording? Duke had reached out. These are the schools that reached out or were in contact or shown interest. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Reached out. Uh, these are the schools that made contact with me or whatever it was. It's, it's some very meticulously worded thing. Guys. Now I, I don't know whether Duke contacted Carlisle or not. Uh, I have my suspicions that <laughs> based on common sense and, and reason, uh, but I don't know. Uh, anything is possible. But what I will say is we have seen many times in the past, both with high school recruits and in the transfer portal, the kids will just include Duke, right? They'll include Duke. They'll reach out to Duke and then include Duke on the list. It gives uh, a little pop of credibility. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it might be aspirational, right? It might be the sort of thing where like, look, and again, I don't know what happened with Carlisle. And Carlisle is a good young This is just an example of like, is it's yeah, not correct. using this one. To, if, if a player calls up Duke and is like, hey, are you interested? And Duke is like, no, nah, we're good. Thanks. Right. They might still put Duke on the list because they have made their intentions of like, hey, I might be interested known. And then yeah. you never know what happens to a team's roster, right? So if you just like put out there, hey, uh, you know, but then I don't think that fans need to react every time a guy has Duke in the list because yeah. I, I don't I don't want it to, to appear to players that are con, uh, considering returning. Uh, I don't want it to appear like Duke is like mass shopping, you know, on the old open market because yeah. I just, especially right now, I just don't think it's true. <laughs> I just, no, I, not I, this time of year, at least. No, I'm and sure I there might be due diligence for like filling uh, bench pieces. Maybe um, my strong suspicion is that Duke will end up reaching out to uh, experienced players since next year's team will be very young. Uh Maybe there are prospects that Duke might fall in love with uh, that are underclassmen uh, that are raw talent. Maybe, maybe if they had had a scout on them like earlier, like especially if it was a, a guy that Duke had maybe offered before and Duke pursues them again, like maybe, but like I still, I'm, I'm a little more skeptical of those. I'm far less skeptical when it's like a grad transfer who clearly would play 15 minutes a game or something uh, that I, I'm probably would believe that they would reach out under those circumstances, depending on the yeah. position, but especially while Duke is still playing next week, I just expect a lot of transfers to enter the portal. And I don't want to see all these Duke fans tweeting out like, Whoa, here's how player X is going to fit into next year's team potentially, because yeah. the goal needs to be first yeah. and foremost, and see who we can get back. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know who we can get back, but the first goal needs to be, hey, uh, open up the safe for your Jared McCain's, your Tyrese Proctor's, 
Yeah. See if you can convince them to stay, even just one of them to stay. Yeah. Right? I um, think we, 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 yeah. as in me, you and Zion have suspicions and have talked to people who there's been small conversations throughout the year of what uh, players are going, are thinking about doing at the end of the season. So I think besides maybe a guy or two, there's nothing set in stone yet. And a lot of conversations happen after the tournament. I know, I know like absolutely conversations happen after the tournament and that's when decisions are made. So when you hear, and going back to what Russ said, like I'll bring up, I'll bring up, I think how you say it's Kalal, Kalal where? Khalil, Kalal? Where, yeah, where? Yeah, he was one, and this isn't a shot at him really, but I was told that it, there wasn't mutual interest, just his camp reached out and then Duke was included on his list. Now, whether he told the media that it was it or his camp did, it doesn't matter. There's no one's really at fault here. You're, they're doing what, they're, what they think is best for their player and their chances in the future. So, but with that being said, it's not on the media for tweeting it and getting it wrong at do what it's just, they get told by their coaching staff, by their parents, by their camp, by their agent, who has had interest. And that is always going to be within the best interest of the, of the player. So don't take it on anybody. It's nothing, per, it's nothing crazy, but just like, don't take it and run with everything. There was probably a dozen or so guys last year that Duke was in contact with in the portal that um, obviously ended up just not being the case. And so, yeah. There were also players they, that just never entered the portal. <laughs> exactly so yeah, take, like, take everything that you see with a grain of salt i i'm gonna be the type that like if, if someone says it i'll probably retweet it but i'm not gonna do something about a whole write-up about the guy it's just like it's it's this time of year where this team's focused on march and like and like russ said these players are on twitter more than or sorry these twitter these players are on x and social media more than they're on twitter them. nobody calls it x exactly um these players are on social media more than you might think they are they're seeing all this stuff and so blasting social media with, oh, Duke's interested in this guard next year. And guard X is looking at it like, oh, does this mean something that I don't know type thing? So just take it with a grain of salt. It is what it is. Also, Baylor is, uh, oh, now they're down four. Anyways, um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I like that PSA. We'll continue to preach it on Twitter until the season's over. And then when the season's over and decisions are made, then we can start getting excited about transfers. But for the next probably – at least the next two weeks, I wouldn't put much stock into anything you hear about Duke being interested in players. And once the time comes where the season's over and we know that conversations have already happened um, and then decisions are being made, you'll know quickly who Duke is really interested in because visits will happen fast. Things will move a lot faster yeah. than they would um, right now. So just be patient with that. Stuff's not going to be decided for a few weeks. And I'm happy with it because that means Duke's still playing. So let's just be happy with that. For now. Yeah, uh, I I think all of that is good. I am just probably not going to tweet anything about people who are on lists unless, like, I think <laughs> not to not to advertise for you know summer shows that we might do or like April May shows that we might do, but I, I think we might be more reliable sources <laughs> maybe on some of these guys yeah. than uh what you're just gonna hear because again like hey if if somebody asks me which girls in class are interested in you i'm gonna name the hot ones <laughs> i'm 100 <100% laughs> percent naming the hot ones exactly. you know what i mean there's no there's no question in my mind i'm naming the hot ones yeah and the hot ones aren't gonna be like no gross because that's a bad look yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly. right. That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So, so exercise caution, especially like if you run a popular uh, Duke account, you know, maybe exercise some caution on that front. Um, yeah. And if you are interested in who is really interested in Duke, um, I'm sure we will have shows once the season is over. I also would say, even after the season is over, I'm probably going to exercise some degree of caution. Because I would not be surprised if at least one, if not multiple players, uh, test the the waters, right? Oh, yeah. If they if they test the NBA waters, they might enter the portal, and and it might surprise some people to enter the portal. And it's not even a I'm definitely leaving, but I'm just I want to have the option, right? Uh, in this free market, uh, I don't really blame any kid for doing anything, um, no. but if you know a kid enters the portal. And everybody on Twitter is like, fuck you, goodbye, we don't need you. Or if a kid enters the portal and then some other person who we're not actually interested in enters the uh, the portal and says, Duke uh, made contact, and everyone is like, I'd rather have him than Player X anyway. Yeah, not Players will see it. Players will 100% see it. And it's not like 
Twitter, random Twitter users will determine what a player does. Like that's, I, it's not the case. Yeah. But, but it does impact emotional like things and emotion does play a role in how you feel, right? Like if you're offered the same amount of money from Duke than you are, as you are somewhere else and you're feeling the love more somewhere else. Yep. I'm not saying it, it, that it's impossible that that kind of thing might play a role. So, you know, just tread lightly um, yep. and be smart. And again, if you see, if you see like me tweeting about like, now here's a guy that Duke is interested in, then, then, then I, I I'm going to, I'm going to be really cautious with how I tweet it out. So if I tweeted out odds are either a, the, odds are I know something. <laughs> Yeah. Odds are I know something. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be loose about that, I don't think. Yeah. Um, no, don't blame me. Boy, missing two. Yeah. We're right at the All end right. of a game with uh Ryan. We're watching Ryan sweat his money line <laughs> parlay live. Well, that, plus I have Baylor in my final four so for some reason. So but it's whatever. My bracket's why you have anyway. Baylor in your final four? I could have told you not to do that. Well, I wasn't gonna do UNC and I don't trust Arizona, so it is what it is. Oh, um I trust Arizona. <laughs> Anyways, all right, man. Uh, great show. Uh, appreciate you uh, going along this fun ride with me. Show the nails one more time. Hold on. Let me. Uh, let's let's get this up here. Boom. Show Jesus. them. Bang. You gotta like warn me. Like there are people watching this. You know. Like <laughs> I'm also so tired. <laughs> so, this is the sleepiest yeah. I've ever been on a live. But like, oh, look man. at that. It looks. That's Beautiful. not bad. Beautiful. I need a second coat. I need a second coat. I've learned now that second coats are a thing that people do with their with their nails you're, you're so, learning man you're learning um, yeah now what will it take to get ryan to paint his nails that's the real question uh, probably not that much final honest. four yeah probably final four and then even that it, yeah we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get there um all right yeah uh final thing uh go to autograph download the app use code c-r-a-z-i-e to get discounted tickets to next week's uh sweet 16 and possibly elite eight uh, home field, use the same code, crazy, C-R-A-Z-I-E, for discounted merch because they're the sickest, and Russ has the hoodie. Um, He's and, trying to do an ad read while his money line is getting blown up. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a lot I, of respect, I respect the commitment to the money line or to the, uh, to the ad read there. But yeah. Uh, promo code crazy on both autograph and home field. Appreciate you all. Hopefully be back sometime before the next game. If not, we'll catch you after the next game regardless. Peace.